defense, but but they did. They found, Jonathan Chamachacha was crazy. So basketball, think about this. March Madness is known because Cinderella. Now, not all these teams that have beaten these other teams are Cinderella, but last night SMU beat number six Houston. So this week alone, since Monday, right? Auburn, number one. Houston, number six. Duke, seven. Kansas, eight. Texas Tech, nine have all lost. And it's Thursday afternoon. That's just this week alone of what's happened with the uh, the SEC, the Big 12, the American Conference, and also uh, the ACC with some teams going down. So that's college basketball in a nutshell. That's how deep it is, how good it is, and maybe how much more spectacular March Madness will be when we start it sometime in March. Yeah, nice win for Oklahoma. They really needed that. Uh, you know, Tech, I'm sure that's a tough pill to swallow because you just probably weren't expecting that one. Uh, but that, yeah, that's life in the Big 12, as you said. Uh, and I think one thing we did not mention about Oklahoma, I mean, Moja Gibson is from Waco University yep. High School. And, you know, he's literally from right over there. And he had a big night last night for Oklahoma as one of their better players. And he's a big part of that win over Texas Tech. So you had a guy from right here. Uh, that was putting up some big numbers for the Sooners last night. So that was cool to see. And, yeah, just a, a big win that they needed and not a loss that Texas Tech wanted, but uh, gives them a little bit less room for error. And you look at Baylor and all the hand-wringing. And, like, it's just been hard for me to get, like, too up and down with this team because it's just like, let's get to March. Like, let's get, let's get to March. Let's get them healthy. And, you know, talking about it in, like, December, I just I, – I feel like they're going to be fine. They just need to – keep grinding it out and sure enough you look up and for all of the hand wringing and all the talk about the injuries and everything else they're in second place in the big 12 yeah. like you, you think we were talking about the eighth place team in the big 12 that was coming off a national title sometimes i mean not that extreme but sometimes it does feel like it because even when they win it's like oh but that wasn't an imp you know what i'm saying it was because wasn't they like, spoiled everybody yeah exactly everybody got so spoiled last year that now it's like you know, you got to be pretty spectacular to really blow people away, it almost feels like. But, um, yeah, it was it was huge for them to get a win last night. I mean, we talked about it wasn't a must win, but in so many ways you could look at it that way. And so for them to go out there and eventually just, you know, smash on the gas basically and pull away there, uh, that was good to see. We haven't really seen that in a while, it feels right. like. So it was a, it was a nice uh, fresh breath of uh, Fre nice fresh air. Uh, uh, breath, breath of fresh, fresh air. air. There yeah. we go, yeah. Baylor's a half game back of Kansas. Now, they'll have their hands full Saturday. Texas comes to town uh, at the Farrell Center. And UT, again, getting some mojo and some days to relax, relax themselves a little bit after the win against Kansas on Monday. I thought Jeremy Sohan's presence was great. I, you can see where Akinjo and Flagler are starting to get a little bit healthier. Still not 100%. Still no LJ Cryer. Uh, but... So Jonathan Chamuchachua had 21, hit a three late. He was there. He was electric. He was energetic. He's always kind of in that huddle at a free throw line or whatever, you know, kind of because he's one, he's taller than everybody else. Uh, he and Thamba putting his arms up and let's kind of gather. That's something all teams do. But he seemed like he had a little extra in his step, and he was a part of the yesterday's post-Kansas State win post game. Jonathan, the uh, obviously the team needed a spark, and you gave it to them not only just offensively, but it appears as if maybe on the court your leadership. Uh, th there's been kind of a question from Coach Drew about that. Not you, but who's going to step up? Has that been discussed at all, or you just went out there and did it? Uh, I feel like it's every nine thing, and it's really like rotating because we're not a one-man show, a one-man team, and we don't only have one leader. So uh, every, every night, like, we have different guys stepping up and just putting in, like, there's never, like, a single person being a leader on the floor. Like, personally, I'm not that much of a vocal leader. I'm more a leader by action. Like, I do stuff and I lead by example. Uh, James lead by example and the way to talk. Adam, talk to the team. Uh, I'm not the only leader in the team flow as well, the way he carry himself and the way he talk to the team. So I feel like it's more like a community thing everybody brings in. So that's Jonathan Chalmachachua after the game. And and we've heard and we've discussed it. Scott Drews brought it up. He said it to us live earlier in the week, and, and we've discussed it. We've heard it, and even in the episodes on ESPN Plus, whatever, that they kind of don't have a vocal leader. And you don't just raise your hand and say, I'm going to be the guy, because that usually means you're kind of a, you know, you're, you're damn sure not the leader. So Scott Drew on Jonathan Chalmachachua, and did he see kind of what he's been missing and looking for? Scott, you've, you've mentioned something a little bit about, you know, needing someone to stand up and 
not to raise their hand and be a leader, but did you see a little bit of that from Jonathan tonight, a little bit more, maybe not just because of the offense, but his role overall? Yeah, well, John always gives us great energy, and uh, um, we all feed off of that. Um, and and he's only played basketball since 16, so uh, sometimes he is vocal, but sometimes the hardest part is to know what to say and where to be, and I think the more and more comfortable on the defensive end he's getting with that, the more vocal and uh, the more vocal you're during the game, the, it's easier to be vocal in timeouts, huddles, and um, he's such a, a, a likable guy. Everybody uh, uh, respects his work and uh, uh, appreciates him, so when he says something, uh, we take it serious. The other thing is, I think James and Adam are starting to get healthier. Um, I mean, Adam's still not 100%. And uh, I don't know if James would say he is now, but um, as they get back into a rhythm, uh, it's a lot easier for them to lead when when they're feeling better as well. All right, that's Scott Drew, Jonathan John with Baylor and Texas Saturday at the Ferrell Center ought to be rocking. I saw where the student section's uh, tickets have already been sold out, and they should be, and uh, they should be all of the time. And I know that there's always a little bit of this and that. All right, uh, we're going to have Bob.